What's up traders, Steven here, your honest trading coach and welcome to another video. I can still remember being so frustrated towards the beginning of my trading career when I was trying to trade based around support and resistance. I would see the market heading towards a support level that I thought would hold. I'd place a buy trade at that support level, the market would come down, bounce up for just a second, getting me in a good mood and making me think that we're gonna win the trade. I'm about to put some money in my pocket just to watch that market directly afterwards continue lower and stop me out. I would do the th same thing on buy trades. I would try to buy at a previous level of structure resistance. Remember, resistance is supposed to come, become support in an uptrend, right? So I would buy this support level that was resistance and just to watch that market head down and end up stopping me out overall. So. I was so frustrated with this, in fact, that towards the beginning of my trading career, the first two years, I wrote off support and resistance completely as something that does not work. I pushed it to the side and did not use it whatsoever. I created strategies without it that performed perfectly fine. But a year later or so, I started realizing that I needed to give support and resistance another chance. So what I did was start adding other conditions to this support and resistance type of trading type of mindset, and the results were amazing. It ended up creating what I now use and what now has become one of my most accurate ways of trading because of these different conditions that I started to add to support and resistance. So it went from the worst way of trading for me to the best way of trading. And that's something that I'm extremely excited to share with you today is how I spot out major levels of structure that I use for trades in order to tell me which direction that trade is likely to go because of that major level of support or resistance or that major level of structure. So what we're gonna do is first, um, for proof, I'm gonna show you the last three ProTrader reports we sent out. The ProTrader report is just an email that I send out to traders every week that tells them the zones that I'm paying attention to across the Forex market on different currency pairs for possible trades and the direction I'm expecting those trades to go in. So we'll look through those and then we'll look at the charts and see how they played out. After that, I'm gonna teach you the exact rules-based way that I spot out extremely accurate zones to trade from in the Forex market. And this will work on any market in the world, stocks, Forex, cryptocurrency, precious metals, does not matter. If it has a chart, this will work on it. So I'm excited to share this with you. And my hope is that by the end of this video, you'll have everything you need to start using accurate zones like this in your trading as well. I'm gonna let the intro and disclaimer roll while I do. Make sure you go ahead and click that like button for me to help out with the YouTube algorithm. Go ahead and click subscribe. It's down below the video to the right hand side of the notification bell. Follow us over on Instagram at the trading channel. And I'll see you after the intro and disclaimer. Welcome back traders, let's jump right in. So what we're gonna be looking at and something that you'll notice and something that actually really helped to improve the accuracy of any of my support and resistance trades was starting to use multiple time frames. This is one of the conditions I added that helped to make this a lot more accurate. So what we're gonna be doing throughout today's video is jumping back and forth between time frames. What I use personally is the daily chart to spot out my major levels of structure and then I drop down to a four hour time frame or a one hour time frame in order to actually place the trades themselves. So you'll see me doing that multiple times throughout this video. And again, this is one of the main things that helped improve the accuracy of my support and resistance trading was using multiple time frames. This can be used on lower time frames. If you want to trade your trading time frame where you look for entries, it's the 15 minute chart, then use the four hour chart for structure levels, something like that. You get the point though. So let's go ahead and take a look now at our first pro trader report. This was the most recent one from this week. This was sent out this Monday on 8-17 or August 17th. On August 17th, I alerted traders to an opportunity I saw on the pound New Zealand, as you can see right here. And if you look with me, the support area that I pointed out on the pound New Zealand was 1.9765 between that and 1.9905. And we will go back over to the chart and go ahead and look at how this played out. You can see that that's exactly where our zone is between 1.9765 and 1.9905. So remember me saying that what we're going to be doing is going down to lower time frames. Well, at the time I sent out the email for the pro trader report, this is about where price was. And I was telling traders that I was looking forward to the market coming back into this zone and pushing higher. Now let's see what happened. All right. Now we got into the zone. Let's drop down to a four hour chart and check out how much of a move we actually got out of this zone. If we hit play, you can see that since then we have pushed up about, let me get my ruler tool out, 300 
almost for a little over 400 pips from this zone. And now what I want to do is show you how I actually spotted that zone out, but not yet. I want to give you some more proof to show you that I use this in my own trading all the time. And it really is one of the most accurate ways that I personally have ever traded. So this is one example. It was the pound New Zealand. I'm going to show you the whole pro trade report. So if we have any losing ones, which will happen, these zones don't hold up 100% of the time. But if I have losing zones, you will see them throughout this video. So that was our first call was on the pound New Zealand popping up out of our green zone. Our second call was the Euro New Zealand. We were expecting this pair to drop. You can see our red zone here. That is a level of resistance or a resistance area. I expected the Euro New Zealand to fall from that area existed between 1.8177 and 1.8356. So what we're gonna do is head over to the Euro New Zealand now. And here we are on that chart. I will go down to the, or out to the daily, not down, up actually to the daily. We'll put our market exactly where it was whenever I sent this out, which was about right here, I do believe. Yeah, the market had just touched the zone whenever I sent out the report. So here we are. Let's go down to a four hour time frame, just as we did before on the Euro New Zealand. Let's hit play. What happened in the zone? Market came up to the zone, dropped, came up to the zone, and now we're seeing a possible fall yet again from our area of resistance. But this drop itself was a drop of about 250 pips from our resistance zone. Again, later on in the video, I'm gonna show you exactly how I point these zones out. It's an extremely powerful way of trading, a powerful way to predict what the market's likely to do next is by using the support and resistance levels that are considered major structure levels. And I'm going to show you how I point out major structure levels in just a second. Next, we had the Euro Canada. Let's take a look at that chart out to the daily yet again, over to the Euro CAD. On this chart, you can see that we did have a level of resistance that the market pushed down from. But according to that pro trader report, we're actually still waiting on the market to fall down into our green zone. So just so you know, throughout the rest of this week, it's already Thursday, uh, but next week I will be looking through the week at the areas between 1.5537 and 1.5448 for possible trading opportunities to the upside from the Euro New Zealand, excuse me, Euro Canada, that's the one we're on right now. That was the Euro CAD, CAD Yen. We actually have a trade that I just sent out in email analysis to EAP members out of the CAD yen. This pair came down into the area that's green that we were looking at. Let's head back over to the email itself. As you can see, we have a support zone, numbers being 79.58 between that and 80.13. It's the green zone you see on the illustration. Here is our zone, 79.60 and 80.13. The market came into this zone and on a smaller time frame, we actually had a really nice entry reason that I took currently we have pushed up and down, getting not even quite halfway to our targets, but also not even getting close to stopping us out. So we'll see how this trade plays out, but I'm actually involved in a long position based on this exact analysis right now on the Canada Yen. We'll see what happens there. Let's go ahead and move on now to our next pro trader report, which was the week before last. It was the date of 8-11. So on August 11, I sent out an email analysis telling, not an email analysis, a pro trader report, excuse me, telling traders that I was interested in the Aussie Canada from the green zone that you can see on the chart. This zone exists between 0 0.9449 and 0 0.939, 393. That's a lot of threes and nines. <laughs> anyway, so let's go back over to the chart now, check out the Aussie Canada. So on the Aussie Canada, I'll, draw, I'll go out to the daily chart. We actually had a trade from this area in the EAP. I'll put a link to that. Last week we had this trade. I'll put a link to it somewhere, but not a link to it, a screenshot. Damn, tripping over words here. Put a screenshot of that trade somewhere, but here we are. Let's keep the market pushing forward. Now we're in our zone, okay? This was the green zone I pointed out on the pro trader report. Told traders I was looking for a bounce out of this zone. You just saw that on the email we looked at. So let's drop down now to the hourly time frame. This is actually where we had our trade. The trade ended up being a really nice one, hitting a three to one risk reward. Again, there should be a screenshot somewhere of the email analysis I sent out to traders in the EAP training program. Let's hit play. So as the market comes into this zone, we end up getting an extremely nice push up and we won't, we don't have to actually keep this trade going. In general, you can see that we got a nice push up from this zone of about a little over a hundred pips so far. So that's the Aussie Canada. Let's take a look at our next one, which was the pound yen. I can go ahead and tell you the pound yen didn't quite reach our zone. I remember this one, but we'll go take a look at it so you can see for yourself. So here we go. That zone that was red on the chart a second ago on the pro trade report is this zone. Market hasn't made it there yet, but just so you're aware, if the pound yen gets to between 1.4151 and 1.4080, I will be looking for possible short trades out of this zone on the pound yen. Let's go ahead and move on now to our next pair. 
pound yen. Now we have the Aussie dollar. I can go ahead and tell you the Aussie dollar also did not come into our green zone. I'll quickly go over there and look at it. As you can see, we got close to our green zone here, but we didn't actually get into the zone on any of those swing lows. So let's move on now to our next pro trader report we're gonna look at. This is the last one. And then we're gonna go into exactly how I identify these zones. This whole section of the video is just about proof. I wanna to prove to you that over the past three weeks, this has worked out extremely well and been an extremely accurate way to trade. And that's not just over the past three weeks. I just don't feel like putting you through looking at every pro trader report we've ever sent out. That would be terrifying and take way too long. Here we have a pound New Zealand, the same zone we looked at at the beginning on the pound New Zealand. That's green now was actually a zone of resistance that was red before. So let me zoom the chart out so I can change this into red. This was an area of resistance a couple of weeks earlier. The pro trader report on this one is from 8.3. So on 8.3, this was actually an area of resistance, not support. The market was about right here. Whenever I sent out the pro trader report on this, let's go ahead and go back over to that. As you can see, we had just come into this zone between 1.9905 and 1.9765. So when we come up into that zone, I'm telling traders, hey guys, I'm looking for possible short trades out of the zone on lower time frames. Let's go down to the four hour chart, see what happens here. Click play. We had a nice push down there, another nice push down there, and there's a really nice push down. We'll take a look at this. We have a move that was about 250 pips out of this zone on the four hour chart. Plenty of room to take targets on these lower time frames, but again, just pushing out of one of these major zones of resistance. I'm gonna speed this process up a little bit. We have a dollar Swiss where I was looking for some trend continuation out of this pair from the red zone that exists between 0.9251 and 0 0.9181. Let's go over to the dollar Swiss. I think I said pound Swiss. Let's go over to the dollar Swiss and check that out now. Here we are on that chart and I'm gonna zoom out to the daily. We won't go through the market replay mode as you can see, just to speed things up. As you can see, 0 0.9251, 0 0.9181, that's the zone I pointed out. The market was, this candle had almost closed whenever I sent that pro trade report out. But since then we've had a push down from this level, a push back up into it and another heavy push down of a lot of pips on smaller time frames. It would have been plenty enough to hit targets around 200 pips coming out of that zone on the dollar Swiss. Lastly, We've already seen the Aussie Canada. We'll take a look at the dollar yen, but we've also already seen the Aussie dollar. These were just weeks before the actual move happened, but the dollar yen we will take a look at lastly here before I start to teach you exactly how I point out these extremely accurate zones and use them in order to place extremely accurate trades. So let's take a look at the dollar yen. We have a market that pushed up into our red zone after so, after doing so, excuse me, if I scroll the chart back, you can see that even on the four hour chart, after pushing up into this zone, we get a nice move from swing high to low of around a little over 120 pips. So another nice move out of those zones. Now what I wanna do, now that you see how well this worked, we just looked through the past three pro trade reports. I hid nothing from you. This was not in hindsight. I'd send these reports out well before the market makes any moves. But what I wanna do now is give you a way for this to actually benefit your trading. Because seeing me make accurate predictions in the market doesn't really help your trading, does it? But what will help is if I show you exactly what I'm looking for every single time I place trades using this method. So let's take a look at that right now. All right, traders, so now what I'm gonna do is take you through each and every one of those trades and actually explain the analysis behind it. Now that you've seen the outcome that happened, let's talk about why I actually saw these zones as important levels and major levels of structure. So here we're looking at the pound New Zealand trade and on the pound New Zealand trade, if you remember, I was saying that this was initially a resistance level from a few weeks ago. 8.3 is when that pro trader report came out, August the 3rd. So on August the 3rd, what I noticed was that we had a level of consolidation here that also was a level of support. I looked left even further. So what's the first step here? Let me go ahead and explain this, break it down for anybody that's new. What I'm doing essentially is looking left to see where compared to price, if price is right here, where is my next level of possible support or resistance? This is a pretty simple process. I'm just looking for the swing lows, swing highs, swing lows, swing highs, swing lows, swing highs, and trying to find the next level the market could have a problem pushing above. So I do that in this specific example and in every example you're gonna see. We have this level of support, but that's not all I'm looking for. One of the key factors to this, not only is using multiple time frames, as I said, or on a daily chart, I'm looking for entries on lower time frames, but a key factor is finding levels in the market that have been tested multiple times and the markets reacted from multiple times because that gives you 
a pretty good inclination that the market will react from that level yet again. So here we had a level that was my most previous level of resistance. And if you will, the next level, the market was going to hit and possibly have problems in. We also have a level that was tested multiple times looking left third time here and fourth time here is resistance as the market got pushed down. Those two factors lead me to believe that if we get up into this zone, we're definitely going to see some type of reaction out of the market. And as you just saw, on the pound New Zealand that absolutely happened we had a nice move down I'm not because I'm trading on lower time frames I'm not looking for this to be a complete reversal and to push the daily chart down does that happen from time to time yes and you can get some incredible risk to reward ratios when it does especially if you're taking your stop loss on a smaller time frame but what I'm looking at is these zones as accurate levels when trading based on entries and stops and targets on lower time frames, which works extremely well for me in my own trading. So that's what happened there on the pound New Zealand. Now we'll switch this to green just to save some time and I'll show you it's the same exact analysis, right? Except now we've pushed above that level. So this is the pound New Zealand long trade. In this case, we use it as resistance once again. So now we just add a fifth test to this. And if the market comes back into it, it's, uh, there's a high degree of likelihood that the market is going to react in a positive way when coming into this zone because it is a level that is the most previous level of resistance. What I mean by that is once the market breaks it, and here's our pullback right here. So let's zoom in and talk about this a little bit. The most recent level, what I mean by that is that this right here is the most recent level of resistance that was broken if the market pulls back to that zone, we already have a pretty likely chance that we're going to see a reaction to the upside. But if you add in the fact that it's the most recent level that was broken, you add that to this being the fifth time that the market's used it as support and resistance. You see what I'm saying? That multiple time tested plus being the most recent level of resistance that could possibly turn into support that provides a very high degree of accuracy for these types of trades. So next, let's take a look at Hopefully you're understanding that. The next one we'll take a look at is actually one of my favorites because we had a really nice trade out of it, the Aussie Canada. So let's go to the Aussie Canada and take a look at the analysis behind this. Very similar to what we just looked at on the pound New Zealand. If we break up here, we have, we have our moves, we have push up to a swing high, down to a swing low, push up to a swing high, down to a swing low. When we're starting to retrace here, what I'm looking at is where's the next level, if we're gonna start pushing down, What's the next level the market's going to have trouble getting past while pushing down? The way I find that is just by looking left for major levels of structure. This is a level that was tested multiple times in this consolidation period, and the market had a lot of trouble getting above it. Look at how many days we stayed there before the market pushed higher. That gives me a really good, accurate zone to take possible long trades out of because obviously the market stopped here for a reason in the past, and it's likely that it will stop here again on its way down. So that's what led me to believe that if this market pulls down, we'll definitely see a reaction out of the Aussie Canada from this zone. And if I put a horizontal line on the screen, you'll see that this zone was also a level that was tested looking left multiple times in the past as support and resistance. So hopefully it's all coming together now. What I mean by this is I'm literally just waiting for the most previous tested level, whether that be in a trend or uh, counter trend trade i'm looking for that most previous level of structure and i'm putting a horizontal line near that and asking myself is this a level that the market has respected multiple times in the past and if so and it's my most previous level that was just broken as resistance could possibly turn into support then that's when i want to be looking for possible trades out of that area so we'll take a look at two more and then i'll let you guys go but these next two i want to look at I want to kind of explain the counter trend way of looking at these zones instead of just the trend continuation way, which is what we've looked at just now and recently. So Euro New Zealand is what we're going to look at. This is a little bit cluttered, but pay attention just right in here. This was a strategy I was testing. Sorry for the clutter. But we had a market at the time that I sent out the pro trade report. I want you to look at where the market was on the Euro New Zealand. So where's the market right now? We have just started to touch our zone, right? So if we go back over to the Euro New Zealand, that means that we were on this candle right here. So on this candle right here is when I alerted traders that, hey, I'm expecting a fall from the Euro New Zealand out of this zone. What I want to talk to you about right now is the reason why. We're in an uptrend. You're probably thinking, man, Stephen, I've seen plenty of trend continuation videos from you. Why are you trading against the trend here on the daily chart? Well, the reason is because if we're moving up, 
What I want to ask myself is where's the next area the market is going to have a very difficult time getting above? And the way I notice that, yet again, is I look left. If I put a horizontal line exactly where price is, okay, if I'm looking left from my horizontal line, from price, what's the next level of resistance? If the market continues higher, it's likely to hit. What do I notice? This level right here. I look left just a little bit further, and I notice that this level right here has acted as resistance multiple times in the past, four times to be exact. So if it's the next level that's going to get hit by price, and it's the next level, I think price is going to have a hard time getting above, plus it's been tested multiple times. That's what gives me that set in stone, ready to go. Let's go ahead and take this market short if we get an entry reason on a smaller time frame. One thing to mention is that I'm not just going short if the market enters this zone. It's a likely area for the market to fall, but I need a way to put a stop loss. I need a way to actually enter the market. I don't want to just be entering based on a zone. And let's see what the market does here. As you can see, we get that nice push down. The market's back in that area now, but this move right here on a daily chart, if trading on a four hour or one hour, that would have been plenty of time to take possible profits, to take your possible targets off because that was about a 200 pip move right there. So that's the counter trend version. I just went over the trend continuation version. Simply put, we are waiting on the next level the market's going to hit. If we're in trend continuation, that is going to look like this. We're pushing up, trend continuation, that's gonna look like this. Pushing down, trend continuation, that's gonna look like this. The next level the market's going to hit. Then we're looking left, and we're asking ourselves, was this a level that was tested multiple times in the past? One, two, three. If so, then this is a zone I wanna pay attention to for possible short trades. That's the trend continuation version. On the way up, let's do this. If we're doing something counter trend, let's say we're trending like this, if the market's right here, I wanna look left and ask myself, what's the next level the market's going to have an issue getting above? That's obviously, right here right that's the next level of resistance the next question i have to ask is was this level a level that's been tested multiple times in the past one two three as support and resistance if that is the case then this is an area counter trend that i want to look for some possible falls out of this market a possible drop out of this market so if that was interesting to you and you're ready for some more advanced trading i'm going to jump straight into this because we actually had a few spots open up in the eap training program i'll put a few testimonials on the screen from recent graduates in this program you will receive email analysis which is three to five emails kind of like the aussie canada that i just sent you of course all of them are not wins i have a win rate of about 58 percent this year so far so they're all not wins by any means out of 100 trades i'll, I'll lose at least 40 probably 50 by the end of the year but that is included with the EAP training program that is called email analysis. It's three to five emails each week that I send you based on the strategies you learn in the course. Speaking of the course, the EAP training program also comes with a complete course teaching you everything you need to know about the strategies I use on a day-to-day -day basis, teaching you about risk management and discipline, and giving you a review every couple of weeks of the trades we've been placing based on email analysis. Along with that, you also be getting what I call priority email, meaning any questions you have about the course or about trading in general, it will be me that is contacting you back directly and I'll be answering any of those questions that you have to get you on your journey, uh, to get you further along on your journey to becoming a profitable trader. And the best part of all of this is that the EAP training program comes with a 60 day money back guarantee. So if you are not satisfied and you have followed the rules of the program and actually put forth effort and you decide it's not for you, no problem at all, shoot us an email and we will be glad to refund your money. So with that said, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button to make sure that we get ranked up there on the YouTube algorithm so we can share this with as many people, so we can share this with as many people as possible. I've been talking too long. And go ahead and subscribe by clicking the button down below the video to the right hand side. Follow us over on Instagram at the trading channel and I will talk to you in the next video. See you soon.